get into it. Coach Colin here, Sold Not For Sale podcast. We got longtime friend of the JRE, Elon Musk, absolutely destroying Kamala Harris in this interview that he just did. And I just went ahead and found every moment where he was talking about her. It is wild. Elon Musk has to be Trump's strongest ally right now. I mean, RFK is doing his thing. Vance is doing his thing like no one else. Tulsi's doing her thing. But Elon is going very, very, very hard. And he has the most subscribers and followers out of any of those people that I just mentioned. And in this interview, he just lets it fly, man. Let's get into it. We're going to be talking about what he thinks will happen if she wins, calling her a puppet, the Epstein client list, lawfare, and what you're about to see right now, the Kamala joke that he took down. Listen to this. And I've been trashing Kamala nonstop. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I mean, the Kamala puppet, I call her, you know. The, 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 the machine that the Kamala puppet represents. Yeah, she's irrelevant. I mean, she's <laughs> yes. not even. No, no, like, a, like a, I, made a, I made a joke, which I realized I, I deleted, um, which is like nobody's even bothering to try to kill Kamala because it's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> what do you achieve? Nothing. No, it's totally Just right. find another puppet. Exactly. That's... <laughs> it's no point in killing. It's deep and true, though. Nobody's trying to kill Joe Biden. It's in... oh, <laughs> It would be pointless. You. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> you actually put that up? Yeah. Now, some people interpreted it as, 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 as though I was calling for people to, to of course. Uh, assassinate her. But I, but, I, but, I was like, but I was like, no, even, you know, you know I, was just, I, was, I was like, doesn't it seem strange that no one's even bothered <laughs> to try? It's not worth it. I mean, there's an endless <laughs> supply. Yeah, I'm like, nobody would, it's, it's absurd. It like, could be anybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, 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 nobody's going to try to, no, nobody tries to assassinate a puppet. Of course not. Um, a marionette. Yeah, a marionette. It's just like, <laughs> you know. That's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. What? She's safe. Like, I, I, like to, to try to kill Trump twice with actual guns and bullets. Um, oh, yeah. He shot in the air right in but, Butler where I was. And, uh, he doesn't seem rattled. It's weird. Does he to you? He doesn't seem what? Rattled. Uh, he's, he, I mean, he's the constitution of an ox, it seems. Um, you know, it's, it's not like working out and eating healthy. <laughs> <laughs> And he's okay. We gotta tape this. Oh, yeah, we're good. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so let me he's, he's not like let me eat another salad. That's not. <laughs> no, or, or work out. You know, you know, fastidiously. That's he. He. I feel like hell. He doesn't work out, and he eats. You know, cheeseburgers and diet coke and stuff. And because it, it just, I think it just inherently has a, a strong constitution. So, and you. I mean, you were just with him. He didn't seem like a man who'd been. The subject of two assassination attempts. No, he seemed uh, of you know sound mind and body and uh, strong backbone. Man, come on, Elon Musk! What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> he did take it down, and he wasn't calling for any violence. It was a joke, and I think he's made it clear throughout this clip. You know, and you know he's kind of right about the puppet remark. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. no one i i made this argument before no one is controlling trump i was talking with my mom and she was like oh kamala's gonna win and i'm like oh my god i'm like listen because she doesn't know about deep state and everything like that and i'm explaining to her i'm like listen at least when trump makes a decision you know it's him making the decision you know even people who don't like him can at least admit that they know he does what he wants which is why so many people love him why so many people hate him you know, like when he had a decision to kill that Iranian general, they were like, here's three options where you don't have to do that. And he was like, cool, do it. And they're like, wait, what? You cannot do it. He's like, yeah, I know, but do it now. Thank you. And he probably just started eating a cheeseburger or something. You know what I mean? He does what he wants. I like that. I don't know about you. All right, let's get into this next clip. It's where Tucker Carlson and Elon are talking about what happens if Kamala Harris wins. Listen to this. I mean, my view is, is that if Trump doesn't win this election, it's the last election we're going to have. Um, 
that uh, the Democrats, the Dem machine, um, has been uh, importing so many people, bringing in so many illegals, flying, flying in with this like CBP border app thing that n nobody even knew about, like secret program. That's illegal, basically. It's, it's, it's illegal, but there's no action by DOJ to actually to, to stop it from happening. They're um, transporting uh, large numbers of, of illegals to swing states. Um, if, you, if you look at the numbers, these are the numbers from the government website. So, like from the Demo De Democrat administered government website. Like, where do you get this data? From the government website that is run by Democrats. Um, and uh, there are triple digit increases in illegals to all the swing states. And in some cases, it's like 700% over the last three years. Now, these swing state margins are you know, sometimes 10, 20,000 votes. So what happens if you put you know, hundreds of thousands of people into each swing state? Uh, and and, and, and for the, for the, if, when somebody is granted asylum, they are fast-tracked. They, 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 they can get a green card, and then five years after the green card, uh, they, can get, they can get citizenship and they can fully legally vote. And when they do so, they vote overwhelmingly Democrat. And, the, and sometimes they get this rebuttal of like, well, a lot of them, their social values don't align with right. sort of the far left sort of woke ideology. Yeah. I said, that's true, but, um, but that's not their top priority. The ter their top priority is getting their friends and family also to the United States. Uh, and the, the, the Dems also issue all these programs, these uh, sort of handouts, essentially, that make them beholden to the Democratic Party. So they vote down. That's what happens. So my prediction is if there's another four years of a Dem administration, they will legalize so many uh, uh, illegals that are there uh, that the next election, there won't be any swing states. And, it's the, and we'll be a single party country, just like California is a single party state. That's a supermajority Dem state in California. Because of immigration? Yes. The, ca California was uh, fairly reliably re Republican. Um, Bill Clinton lost California in 92 and won West Virginia. Yes. Um, so there was a 1986 amnesty. Yes. Um, uh, and and um, thereafter, California trended very strongly Dem. And is at this point, uh, I think, 65, 70% Dem, something like that. It's supermajority Dem. The, the, the California legislature yes. is more than two thirds Democrat. Um, Has it improved the state? No. It's, it's not. Um, and they, they, California just passed, which is shocking, it's hard to believe this is, even, this is even real, but California just passed a law making it illegal uh, to require voter ID in any election at all in California. Did you, didn't you know that? No. Yeah, Newsom signed it into law last week. It's illegal to require an ID. In any election, even a town council. And, and a friend of mine who was, who thought, this, can the, who lives in Palo Alto, was like, is, it was like, is this actually r real? And he went to like vote in like some city council election. He tried to show them his ID, and they said, "We're not even allowed to look at your ID." Have they this ex extended the same? Actually, what's going on right now? No. But By the way, they're proud of it. They're not hiding it. But and it's, it's only law. voting. It's not, it's not buying a gun or buying liquor or buying a pack of cigarettes or flying on an airplane or renting a hotel room. It's only voting. That it's illegal. Oh, if you try to buy a gun, I mean, they're going to ID you six ways a Sunday. Man, very interesting stuff by Elon Musk. You know, a lot of us, you know, you want to always say, like, it's not going to be the last election. Obviously not. But he builds up a strong case with what he just said. I'm never in the camp of like, oh, this is going to be the last election. Let's go over to the next clip. But when he builds up that case... You know, that app, that app, is like I just showed it in a video I just did like a day or two ago. That app makes it real easy and they can't vet you or anything. And I was talking about how dangerous it could be and how the cartels could use it because that's what Trump was talking about. But also, yeah, there could be another there could be there could be 10 million people a year because of that app easily, easily. And it doesn't seem like they have any sense of stopping at all. 
So I guess he's kind of right. Because where do they keep putting them? They keep putting them in swing states, you know? A lot of people are suggesting this is why Gavin Newsom has gone to these lengths, because this is California. It's turning into Trump country. A lot of Trump people out there. Because, of course, if you look at California, you look at what's going on, a lot of people have to be willing to flip, not because they're just in love with Trump, but because if you live in a place that used to be one of the most beautiful states, and all of a sudden you have to leave your windows open when you park your car so people don't smash your windows, so they can just steal the stuff gracefully and just leave. That's crazy. You know, there's been video after video of people just going up to cars while people are in them and just doing graffiti on them and just walking off, walking off, not running off. It's wild. So Gavin Newsom is in dire straits right now, I'd have to say. Let's move on to the next clip. Elon Musk is going to just talk about uh, why he feels Kamala is a puppet. But why not join the easier side? I mean, you're just you're creating problems for yourself by getting on stage with Trump. And enjoy. I mean, you must have had friends who said that to you. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But people who care about you, like wh why even get involved in this? Well, I've get, I, I, because I, I think we want to remain a democracy and we don't want to become a one party state. Yes. That's the reason. Um, and the, it's the exact opposite. They, the people call th Trump a threat to democracy, but the people who are saying Trump's a threat to democracy are themselves the threat to democracy. Yes. Um, one party rule is not democracy. Uh, one party where essentially the party elite pick a candidate, as happened with Kamala, is not democracy. Where did the people vote? Show me where the people voted. No, there were no people voting. It was all just dim party elite that just appointed someone. Um, and, and, and when the, when the Biden puppet, uh, when the poor Biden puppet's uh, ratings sagged, they knifed him in the back immediately and just tossed him out and put a, put a, a, a new puppet on. That's exactly what happened. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, not only are you right, I mean, it's almost not even worth criticizing Kamala Harris. No, no, exactly. What does she have to do with it's, it? it? There's no point in, cr in criticizing Kamala. She's, she's, she's simply the, the, the face of a, large, a much larger machine. Yes. Um, and she will say whatever is, whatever the, tele, the tele, tele, teleprompter, whatever's on the teleprompter, she's going to say it. Yes. Now, she gets stuck if the teleprompter breaks. That happened recently, I think, the... Yeah. <laughs> the teleprompter stalled, and she just she was just like looping for a while, for yeah. about a minute. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I think that happened yesterday or something. <laughs> it was pretty funny to watch. Um, but she'll just say whatever words are on the teleprompter. So you know, um, it, it's really whoever controls the teleprompter is the actual sort of th th those, that's who's actually in charge. And who is that? Do you think? Well, I've, tr I've tried to pin it down. It's it's not like any one kind of mastermind. It's not like, it, it seems to be, it's, it's like um, Kamala's sort of a, a marionette with, you know, th a thousand ma a puppet masters type of thing. Like not, it's, it's, def it's or maybe it's, it's, in, it's, it's somewhere north of a hundred is what it seems like. Yes. Um, I bet you know 80 of them. I probably know most of them, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, just by virtue of your job and what you've been doing for the last 30 years, I mean, you just, yeah. um, and I should say, I think you voted for I'd, Biden. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see a matchup of, of, of those, like, call it the, the, the top 100 puppet masters in the FDN client list. <laughs> Do you think there's some overlap? Strong overlap. <laughs> Strong overlap. Oh, man. This guy. The him, him and also, I got to say, although he did seem very compromised, and I made some videos about it, him and Peter Thiel have had no problem kind of throwing other billionaires under the bus. And actually, in this next clip that I'm going to show you, he actually does just that. Peter Thiel mentioned meeting Epstein, and it was through Reed Hoffman. And now Elon Musk is also going to bring up Reed, but he's also going to... Give it to Kamala in this uh, this little clip here as well. Let's get into it. Will that ever come out, do you think? You know, I, I think part of why Kamala is getting so much support is that uh, if, if Trump wins, that Epstein client list is going to become public. Yes. And some of those billionaires behind Kamala are terrified of that outcome. Yeah. 
Do you think Reed Hoffman's uncomfortable? Yes. Yeah. And Gates. And Gates. Yeah. yeah. And I only ask that because you can sort you just look at them and you're like that. That's a nervous person right there. I don't know. I mean, I assume you know them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Reed Hoffman was my vice president of business development at PayPal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twenty four years ago. Um, he, did, does he seem nervous to you? Yeah, I mean, he's terrified of a Trump victory. Because of the disclosure that would follow? I think, yeah, I mean, I think he, he's, he's certainly ideologically not aligned with Trump anyway, but I think he is concerned about the, uh, the, the, the Epstein situation. Will that ever come out? You know, Joe Rogan always says something about RFK and his book, uh, The Real Fauci, and he always says, he goes, the guy hasn't been sued yet. He goes, you would think if everything he said was made up, lies, he would get sued. And I have to say the same thing with what Elon's saying. Peter Thiel says a bunch of stuff about Reed Hoffman just a few weeks ago on Joe Rogan's podcast. Elon Musk is now saying, if nothing happens to these guys, Gates as well. Peter was going off on Gates. Elon was just mentioned Gates as well. I don't know, man. If this is not true, shouldn't isn't it easy for a billionaire to just sue real quick? Like, ah, let's just sue him. You know, at least to put it out there, at least to say in a grand way, this is defamation. This is not true. You can't say this about me. But nothing. Silence. I don't know. I don't know. It's very, very interesting. And I think Elon's on to something there. You know, I try not to think this about every person that supports Kamala because some people may look at her. Some people can be fooled by just like black person, woman. I'm a good person if I vote for her. There are people who go for that. But when I see celebrities doing it just in masses, you know, really getting out there really making it clear and i know how celebrities i know how management and pr and all of this stuff works but then all of a sudden we also know how diddy parties work we know that some of these people a lot of them in fact they get slicked down in baby oil and diddy tells them to do the what's for and all the everything that we know about we know about there being an island that some guy jeffrey had and diddy even said that he had an island called love island what so also <laughs> when i see these guys billionaires celebrities artists and they're like i have to come out and tell you about kamala harris and they have no policies or anything i just kind of gotta go man i'm not gonna say anything but i just google i just go is there a picture with them with diddy and there always is. I'm just saying there always is. I don't know what that means. But, you know, Elon Musk said it. I didn't say it. Let's get into the last clip here. Elon Musk talking about what could possibly happen to him if Kamala Harris wins. Check this out. Him and X. If she wins, I mean, I, how can they let X continue uh, in its current? form in its current role in American society. They, they, they won't. They will uh, try to shut it down by any means possible. What do you mean by any means possible? I mean, with law, e either by, a, I mean, they'll try to pass laws. Uh, they'll try to prosecute the company, prosecute me. Um, any, I mean, the, the amount of lawfare that we're seeing taking place is, is outrageous. Um, I mean, the I mean, there are many examples, but like the Department of Justice, for example, launched a huge lawsuit against SpaceX for failing to hire asylum seekers. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, asylum is, seekers? Asylum, not asylum, those who have been granted asylum, asylum seekers. Now, there's, now there's also a law uh, called International Traffic and Arms Regulations um, that because SpaceX de uh, develops advanced missile technology that can be used in, in uh, nuclear ICBMs, um, that we, ha we have to be very careful with who we hire. We can only hire someone if they're a permanent resident or a citizen. That's what the ITAR law says. Then there's another law that says that uh, you cannot discriminate against asylum seekers. So we're damned if you do, damned if you don't. 
the DOJ did a massive lawsuit against SpaceX uh, for failing to hire asylum seekers, even though we are, it, it is illegal for us to hire asylum seekers under ITAR law. There's an actual thing that, that, that's, that's going on. Um, and they can only, they can only do a, a, a fairly small number of lawsuits every year. So for, why did they pick this one? Because you're Max. Yeah. yeah, Lawfare. That's very, very interesting. I didn't even hear about that. Did any of you guys hear about that? The DOJ lawsuit against X for failure to hire asylum seekers. That's crazy. Wow. You would think when it comes to Elon Musk and all the jobs that he has and has created, you think they would be, you know, in a perfect world, they'd be like, you didn't hire enough American citizens. You think that's what the, the lawsuit would be. But they're like, we have a bunch of people here and we don't know what their real names are. and We don't we can't verify who they are, but you should let them into your space agency. And if you don't, we're going to sue you. What? <laughs> what? Do they have ID? No, they don't have ID, but they're they're good people. They're good people, I guess. I don't know. Where are you from? The guy clearly, clearly has an Iranian accent. <laughs> and he's just like, Mexico. You're like, see, he's from Mexico. Black guy, clearly Nigerian. <laughs> Where are you from? I am from Mexico as well. See, they're Mexican. Let them in. What's wrong with you? We're suing you guys. This is crazy. Crazy. But that's just basic lawfare, right? They're trying to kind of put him in a corner. This is exactly what they did with Trump. Like a lot of people don't know from the first day that Trump entered office, they sued him. It was an organization that is connected to the DNC. And they tried to sue him right away. And it had been going on, not just the one suit, but like suit after suit the whole time, just the entire time. And I guess that's what they're doing to Elon right now. And they're doing it before you know, God forbid Kamala wins so they can kind of justify it. And then all of a sudden the same stuff that Australia wanted to do to Elon Musk, the same stuff that Brazil wanted to do to Musk. If you don't know, both of those countries were saying to Elon Musk that they're going to find him, that they're going to try and arrest him. The UK actually suggested that they might come and try to arrest him, like just, just odd stuff. And then all of a sudden, if she gets in power, they're going to start doing that to him. I mean, she already has suggested that his privileges are up. He doesn't have the same privileges, which means that if Meta falls in line and all of these platforms fall in line and X doesn't, well, it's like, why don't you have to fall in line? That's kind of what it's working up towards. So if she does win, we'll see what happens to Elon. Honestly, if I was a billionaire, I'd kind of be like, mm. I'm going to hire an army because he can kind of hire an army. I'm just saying, I mean, it's not right. You know, violence is never the answer. I always say that. But if he can hire an army, you kind of, you know what I mean? Can he, can't he hire all of black, uh, what's it called? Blackwater. Can't he just hire Blackwater? There's probably something more secret than Blackwater. Can't he just hire them? What are we talking about here? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't know, but they got power interesting stuff man but elon musk going hard on kamala harris he's not playing around and i think a lot of what he said is correct and if we just recap what he was talking about he went on to talk about her being a puppet having a hundred strings attached to her which i a hundred percent believe billionaires who support her connected to the epstein client list <laughs> lawfare against x just like lawfare against trump and Semi lawfare against Tulsi Gabbard, putting her on that uh, that uh, domestic terrorist watch list. That's a little bit rough. No Secret Service for RFK. Assassination attempts for Donald Trump. I mean, this looks so gross, so gross. And the fact that that side is still going, well, we're just fighting democracy. I thought, or, oh, sorry, a Freudian slip. I didn't mean we're fighting democracy. I mean, uh, threats to democracy. It's so crazy. And that there's still millions of people, because there are, 
like it or not, there are, there are millions of people who are just cheering it all on the whole time. They just don't get it. Sad to see, but very fun to see Elon Musk in this interview. It was a two hour interview. As you guys know, anything that I get off of X, I always repost. So if you want to see any of those clips that you just saw, you can go to X. They're all there. Like, subscribe, turn on the notifications. And other than that, I'm out.